So yeah, this is uh, DA JavaScript Fundamentals in 8.4 News. Um, so uh, here we go. So basically, with in D8, JavaScript is loaded as a library, whereas before we, we would load it any way we saw fit, basically. And if you we were using the library's module, you may be familiar with loading it as a library in D7. Uh, but in D8, that's pretty much the way we do this. Um, so, um, of course, the libraries, like many things in D8, are defined in YAML. And pretty much all of this applies equally to CSS. Uh, we, we won't be covering that, but conceptually it's all the same. So you define a library by putting uh, the basically the name of your library, dot libraries, dot YAML, that goes in the root of your theme or module. And it looks like this. You just repeat the lib, lib name, JavaScript, and then you give it a path here, and the file name, and you have to include this empty object. We'll fill that in later. So some file name uh, is a machine name. Oh look, there's a typo. I always find them during my presentations, but never before. Um, it should really be the name of your module or theme. Um, and they will aggregate all your JavaScript files Drupal will, just like in 7, uh, but if you don't want it to, you have to put this in the empty object to tell it to not aggregate it. And uh, this path here is relative to the modules folder. It's part of the PSR4 namespacing stuff. All right. So uh, each library has some options. Thank you so much. Uh, you can give it a version number which is for your use only because Drupal does absolutely nothing with it. And here's where it gets interesting. Oh, this is another typo. This should not be indented so much because YAML files indenting matters, right? So you can define your de dependencies per library. In this case, uh, I'm defining that I need jQuery from core and I'm taking uh, some lib from some other module. Because uh, by default, yes. I'm sorry, it, um, are these posted online anywhere? Yeah, I wasted a couple minutes at the beginning, but uh, it's sorry. right here. No, I, I was trying to make this bigger because you all probably can't read that tiny little URL. Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to mess around with and kind of got myself into it. I know, I'll tell you at the end or whatever. Unless you, do you need it now? It's, you're, you're going through a little fast and I'm trying to copy it now. Oh, well, the, the slides will definitely be posted. Okay. Oh, well, okay. So it's Todd Siebert, my name. <laughs> There's a lot of slides. So I'm just kind of trying to cook through them, but uh, .github, .io, d8, underscore, js, underscore, f-u-n-d, underscore, the word and, Clearly, I did not make this easy. Underscore <laughs> V84. <laughs> and if anybody gets that right, I'm going to be surprised. Hey, hey, all right. And, and wow. if you did get it right, put it on uh, uh, Twitter, uh, <laughs> hashtag bad count. Yep. There you go. All right. Well, cool. Thanks. All right. Um, so, right, uh, you need to define your dependencies. Uh, and wow, for some reason, because of the aspect ratio, we cannot see what's at the bottom of that slide. That is really unfortunate. Can I do this? Is that going to fix it? Aha. Well, I'll come up with some better way to do this. Let's see. Oh, bloody thing is too smart for its own good. Okay, you can still see it fine? Why is it like smudgy? You suggested like hitting the green circle and seeing if the Macintosh is smart enough to resize it. Yeah. Hitting the green circle. Sorry, the what? Oh, this. Sorry. Well, that's what I did earlier, I thought, and then 
It's and it's still just that. It's the aspect ratio. Okay, so you could go under uh, system preferences and change your monitor aspect. So welcome to uh, Mac OS debugging. Uh, I don't know, is that until my, well, it's closer. We're gonna go with this for now. Okay, so if you need to, uh, so unlike Drupal 7, Drupal 8 puts your scripts in the footer, which generally is what you will always want to do for performance reasons. But if you need it to go in the header, you put header colon true right here. And of course, YAML files indention matters. Okay. Um, so um, this works in a theme. And when you're defining your theme, you're going to use a my theme name dot info dot YAML file, right? So you just have a section of that particular YAML file, your theme info file, with the libraries, and then you define what libraries you're going to need. And here I have to, I define my own theme, which I'm keeping in a subdirectory, and my theme name, my, li my library name. So you define the library. JavaScript files are contained are referenced to by a library. And the theme points to the library. So you don't put your JavaScript file definitions in your info file like you would do in the past. You have to first define a library. So we're, there's like a, a middle step. Does that make sense? Crickets, okay. Um, okay, so the other thing is uh, D8 does not load any JavaScript by default if it doesn't need it. So if you need jQuery for your code, you have to specify it either in your theme or as a requirement for your library. You can also attach uh, a library in Twig. Conveniently, it's named Attach Library. And of course, you still have to do the, the get the path correct. Uh, you can also attach in PHP, much like we used to, but instead of attaching a particular JavaScript file, you're attaching a library. And if you've dealt with the Drupal 7 library module, this should look somewhat familiar. You're using the attachments hook. And uh, basically, you're just going to add a, a new array on the end of that attached libraries, again, with the path and file name of the library definition, not the JavaScript file itself. Okay. And there's a number of other uh, hooks that you can use that can modify the attachment array. Okay. So another way to attach your library to your theme is using the preprocess page, which has access to, access to the attached libraries array and again, you just add yours. Um, you can, there's some disagreement about whether you should be using theme preprocess page to attach libraries because some people strictly think it should be for preprocessing variables and not for attaching things, but you can leave that to your uh, own decision. Conditionally, if you need to load a library in PHP, you can do that in your theme or your module with preprocess page. And um, here, we're going to decide, we're gonna do a check. If this is the front page, then we're gonna attach our library like you saw before. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into this because it gets really complicated really fast, but when you conditionally do anything pretty much in Drupal 8, that could affect the cacheability of that thing, you have to let Drupal know what the condition is based on. So in this case, if we want to know if it's the front page, the condition depends on the path, right? Because if you're in the front page, you're at one path, you're in some other page, you're in a different path. So you have to set the cacheability metadata 
and the context in this case would be your URL dot path. And this, we could talk about this in an entire session, so I'm not going to get into it. But just be aware for doing conditional attachment of libraries. Start googling cacheability met metadata. And this type of thing gets populated all the way to your CDNs and stuff like that. So you got to care. You got to care. Yep. Uh, you can check this uh, link at the bottom for um, more information. OK. Loading external JavaScript is much the same as you did it before. But instead of giving a local path, you give it the entire URL. And it scrolls off the screen here a little bit. Probably should have changed that to React, but whatever. Uh, and you, um, I broke this line. This line is not legal, right? This object, as we saw before, in, in the braces should go at the end of this line. But for sake of readability, I move it to the next line. And you just define this as type external. And again, you can include version numbers and things like that. And uh, if you want to move in the header, all those other parameters are equally valid here. Okay. Um, minify true is another property you might want to consider if it's already minified because sometimes re -minif doubly minifying something will oftentimes screw up your JavaScript file or make it too big. Um, you can also set attributes for your, um, your script lines like defer and async. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it, but it's covered. Any questions so far? All right. <clears throat> OK, so in order to pass configuration to your JavaScript, it's kind of like we did it in Drupal 7, but slightly different. Remember, we used to have Drupal.settings as a JavaScript uh, variable. Now, in order to get that to work at all, you have to include core slash Drupal settings. It's not on by default. Again, Drupal tries to put as little as possible into the browser unless you specifically ask for it. So now, in your pre-process page, you load your library, attach it rather, and under attached, Drupal settings, you'll notice Drupal settings matches this. Right? My theme, which would match this. This lib, which would match this. <laughs> Sorry, it's all a little boily platey, but, and then you define a property, say that could be greeting, right? And you set it to whatever variable you wanted it to be. And then in JavaScript, I'm just console logging it, but you'd probably want to do something better with it. Drupal settings. Drupal settings, my theme, my theme, right? Should this make sense? This lib, this lib, and finally the property here. And that gets you the variable. Now, it doesn't have to be just like hello world. It could be an entire JSON object, an array, anything, right? Manipulating libraries. So now that everything's a library, it means it's basically available to be manipulated because it's in a data structure. And you can basically um, start altering the way those libraries work. There's two new directives, library extends and library overrides, which you can use to modify them. And uh, they would go in your, YAML, your my theme info YAML file. So basically, a library extend basically says you're going to always include some other library when some other library gets called. So in this case, anytime this other themes library gets loaded, you want your themes library to be loaded too. So it's kind of like it's tagged along. Maybe it has to work with it. Um, Okay. So like, uh, yeah. So what's the difference? Uh, that's different from a dependency. So right. That means that you load first. Uh, load order. 
I'm not sure, actually, to tell you the truth. It's like, if it were dependency, uh, they would load first than you would load it. And I'm just wondering why they would have an additional uh, mechanism. Well, see, if you did this, um, if you did this in a module, think about it from, from, a, from a theme perspective, you're right. If you define that other module as like a dependency, we get loaded. But if this was a module we're talking about, and your module, say, wasn't actually active <coughs> on the page, but if you define that you needed to extend some other JavaScript library, it would kick in your library. So because it, yeah, I guess I'm trying. I'm trying to think in terms of in background uh, whether uh, because remember your library know, whether it knows that um, my theme should exist as some kind of module or theme elsewhere and uh, knows therefore that it doesn't have its dependencies and cannot load which would be a good thing it would uh, it would or, give you an error that you could debug right so if you just define this library uh, in a module and you don't have any PHP code or twig code that actually lo you know attaches the library your library would never attach would never load and therefore none of its dependencies would load. But what this is basically saying is anytime Bob gets loaded, load me too. Right? I don't necessarily have any good uh, so we're waiting usage to for this. Into pages you don't necessarily know about. Right. Okay. Or you haven't attached yours, right? Now you could do this in code and just say anytime whatever conditions were happening, load this, but this is kind of one way to kind of do it in configuration versus code. Um, this is here. I, I don't necessarily have any particularly great reason to use it, but these exist. Now, libraries override is more powerful and probably a little more confusing because um, you can basically turn off other libraries, turn off other JavaScript files, or change them in other libraries. Uh, so you can really break your site or break your JavaScript because a lot of things load because they need to, and there's dependencies. But say you just absolutely do not want that other thing loaded and it's not gonna have any negative effect, you can also do this. So in this case, you would put these other theme or modules lib library and define it, just set it to false and it will not load. You can, um, you can actually uh, disable a file, a specific file from loading. You can replace their lib with your lib. Now this one makes a little more sense. Maybe they have some little JavaScript file that's not doing things you want and you tried putting your code in there to fight their code in JavaScript and you lost, but this way you can just replace their folders, crystals, I can't remember that old joke anymore, but yeah. um, <clears throat> or you can actually replace a single JavaScript file by specifying their file and your new file with me so far. Whoops. So pretty much almost always, always, always you should be using libraries, but if you must, you can put a complete script tag in your html.html.twig file, and that's not a typo. <laughs> it just looks like one. Yes. Uh, sorry, um, does library overrides go in uh, your project.libraries.yaml or theme.info.yaml? Or does it matter? What was the first one? Which, uh, which, which YAML file would you put um, libraries override into? The, uh, that would go in your, uh, I had it here. It go, goes in your, your theme info or your module info YAML file. I knew I had it in there. Okay. You can also dynamically create or alter the definition of a library, basically what's in the library.yaml file, 
in code. The color module actually does this and it replaces the CSS uh, libraries with a colored CSS library depending on the options you choose. Um, so this one there actually I know of one place it's used but of course that's for CSS but presumably you could come up with a reason to do this in JavaScript so you use the uh, library info build hook and uh, it kind of looks like your YAML file you define your lib the JavaScript and the JavaScript file. So maybe, maybe, maybe you had a, a slider module that could use one of three different slider JavaScript libraries, slick and whatever other two, and then the user or the admin could pick one, and then this way you could modify the library definition file to specify the JavaScript file you wanted. Cool? Okay, if you really want to be sneaky, and this will kind of break your caching, so unless you have a really, 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 really good reason to do it, um, you can actually attach, uh, you can basically create a script tag dynamically in your head by doing something like this. And of course you have pathing to your file. Okay. Okay, so that's all the ways to get JavaScript loaded. At this point, any questions? Yeah. I have a question about dependencies mm -hmm. in your theme.libraries.yaml. Yep. So when I, there's no documentation. I went through a whole bunch of different you know, um, There's that dot notation. Yeah. Dependency. I figured it out just by trial and error getting the path. I was wondering if you know the form template. Is there any documentation on? You know, I so you're loading a particular JavaScript file or sub part of jQuery UI. Yeah, like a widget. I've never thought of it. Um, it it probably has something to do with PSR for loading. So that's interesting. I uh, I never thought to even try that. But thanks. That's Maybe I'll add that to the next version. Or I think there's a there's actually a pretty decent page on um, D.O with very similar information to this about how to load JavaScript. You might even want to edit that node and contribute back. That'd be awesome. Uh, where are we? Sneaky JS. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Any other questions on loading? How are we on time? Oh, pretty good. Okay. So, what's new with 8.4? that came out on 10.4, and there's a nice little blog about it, the release notes. Um, we got rid of uh, IE 9 and 10 support, which is pretty sweet. Um, now you have a good reason to tell your clients you can't support them. <laughs> But it's like only what, between the two, uh, maybe a percent and a half of the browsers are using them. I mean, uh, visitor people on the internet are using them. I'd love to get rid of IE 11, but it's still around with 12%. And the best I can figure, since it shipped with 8.1, it's probably gonna be there through the end of life of 8.1, which is January 2023. After the end of life of all of us. 2023? You know, they where are going. <laughs> oh God. Stockpile toilet paper and canned soup, I guess, right? I don't know. Um, anyway, so jQuery updated. Uh, we went from uh, 224, was the old one, clocking in almost 100K. Now we're at 321 at 85K, so we save 15K. That's like a 15% savings, that's nice. Um, correspondingly, jQuery UI and some other libraries got uh, updated too, but there's nothing really too much to talk about there. So going from V2 to V3, there's a lot of changes, a lot of breaking changes. Um, they have a nice upgrade guide on jQuery, you should check out. Um, 
And since this, is, this mentions 3.0 because it was written, uh, I don't know, back a year and a half ago when 3.0 got released. And since then, there's been some minor things that have changed, but probably things you're not going to get hung up on. Let's see. Uh, there are some testing related things. Anybody doing JavaScript testing? Yes. All right. Um, so they've been moving over from simple test to PHP unit as part of eight. And uh, there's only 301 simple tests left. And 924 have already been converted. And there's actually have a little countdown timer, which is kind of cool with charts and shows how it's pretty neat. Someone really wants to get off the <laughs> simple test. Okay, REST API. Any, any, anybody using the REST API? All right, love it. Okay, they, uh, they bumped up the performance by 15%. They made accessing node and taxonomies ent entities more direct. So you, now you can just hit slash node versus slash entity node. Um, but they kept backwards compatibility, so don't worry about your, your app, your, whatever your code's not gonna break. They normalized all the time <coughs> fields to RFC 339, which honestly I'm not that familiar with. Um, but at least now you can expect one type of time field, not whatever the coder decided to give you. And there's some other minor changes. Uh, this is all in the, um, you have to kind of go through the release notes and then all the change notes, but th these are the most important ones. There's now a REST endpoint for changing the user's password. And here's the route, path, method, and controller for those who have any idea what this means. Uh, big change is we've now adopted the Airbnb JavaScript style guide. Everybody knows what a style guide is? Cool, it basically tells you when you should indent and when you should use spaces and capitalization and braces and whatnot. Uh, so it's really nice that we now have, there, there are a number of style guys that are widely used. This is one of them. It's perfectly fine. Uh, we made like, Drupal made like eight exceptions to the style guide. Um, and there's a way you can set up ESLint, which is super convenient through your I, IDE or in your task runner, whatever you prefer to use. Um, particularly if you want to check stuff in the core. Particularly, but I think it's. Sorry. If you uh, if you're check if you're doing something in core. Um, yeah, they will it bounce it. Pass, yeah. 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 And little. Or if you're in a project like like examples. Right. That acts as if uh, it was in core. Yeah, I think. Well, now that they've changed the way modules are accepted. Um, if you want it to be part of what the security review, I think they also do the ESLint and the coding standards. Um, you know, we're Drupal developers. You should probably be paying attention to the standard. I don't know. That make it easy for the next person who has to code on your project. Okay. ES6 is now supported in core officially. Um, ES6 is ECMAScript 6, which is officially known as ECMAScript 2015, which is what we all know is JavaScript, okay? It was uh, released, uh, this version was released June of 2015. Uh, they're not trying to rewrite all of the jo core JavaScript to use all of the ES6 new features. They're, that would just be crazy. They're just trying to basically get them to pass ESLint. And I, last I heard, I think they're like two thirds of the way done. Um, but conveniently, okay, IE11 is trash for ES6 compatibility, <laughs> but once you get to Edge, you're not bad since uh, it's an evergreen browser and not that many people are actually using Edge 12. Uh, anything reasonably recent with Firefox has got a good percentage. Anything recent with Chrome does great coverage. Safari 10, look at it, 99. Apple for the win. And uh, iOS 9 was kind of trash, but iOS, uh, as far as ES6 is concerned, but 9 and 10 
come out pretty good. So don't be afraid of ES6. Yeah. Does that mean we're serving ES6? It's we're not running it through uh, through a translator. Serving it. Cool. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. I've seen in core a JS file and an ES6 JS file side by side. Uh, yeah. Is that they're renaming all the files ES6. But they're keeping the old one? I don't know, actually. It's like I've tried to read some of those internal threads, and they just... <laughs> Too long. <laughs> don't read. Yeah, so I, I think that the takeaway here is don't be surprised when it starts showing up more and more in core, especially as new things either get added or get completely rewritten. Um, Yeah, I, I I need to look into that more. Okay, so that covers all of the eight four. Where am I doing? Like, when's this supposed to be over? Ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Perfect. Okay, so this is like the what I intended to cover. Any any questions at this point? What happened to ES seven? Hmm? Oh well, uh, I you know I thought about. ES7 was released June of 2016. Um, basically, the way ECMAScript is working, they have this multi-step process where they new features or changes get suggested, and they go through this multi-step process until they're finally approved. And of course, once they're approved, the browser companies or developers have absolutely no requirement to keep up, right? And people like Chrome and even Mozilla to some degree, like to jump on things before they even made it part, part of the way through the uh, approval process. So you'll see things that haven't even been approved yet that are live in Chrome, yet Chrome won't do so finish some ES6 thing, but they have an ES8 thing. So yeah, ES7 came out in uh, 2016. ES9 will come out in like, what, seven months from now? Uh, yeah, so they're on a yearly cycle. It's going to change. It's going to continue to change. But ES6 was the biggest change. Um, and everything since then has been tweaks and things. Okay. But looking forward, unless there's anything else, any other questions on the previous stuff? Some people mentioned testing. So as of 8.1, um, you could do JavaScript testing using PHP unit, which leveraged Phantom JS, which basically loads a headless version of Chrome. Well, loads Chrome and fakes it into being headless. But there's a proposal to move from PHP unit functional JavaScript testing to using JS-based testing using something called nightwatch.js. Because right now, if you have to write JavaScript-based functional tests, you have to write them in PHP, and it's really verbose. And it's kind of like writing jQuery in a really verbose way. Sorry? In COBOL. In co COBOL. You have to write, yeah, it's your homework assignment, you get to write for the web in assembly. Yes? Um, I'm curious if you've tried uh, using BHAT with Selenium web driver and how you feel it compares to Nightwatch? Uh, I haven't tried Nightwatch. I've done, oh boy, for a non Drupal JavaScript testing, I forgot what I used. It, that was uh, a year and a half ago. Um, so to me, this makes sense because right now, if, if you go by those old, like, are you a back end engineer or are you a front end engineer? From like the Drupal mindset, where the front end developer would just kind of do from templates, which is always kind of weird because if you were doing templates, you had to do PHP because <coughs> we had PHP template, but then we got Twig. So you could be a front end developer and not have to worry about PHP. But if you want to do, if the person who wrote the code wants to do the testing and as a front end developer, you're doing JavaScript, you then had to learn PHP in order to do your testing. So we're kind of like, we got out of one boat and then got back into a different one. So to me, this makes sense. Like, because if you're going to be a real front end engineer, you can know JavaScript, CSS, HTML, 
and twig and you're good and you never have to touch PHP. I think it makes sense. Um, and hopefully since Chrome came up with our true headless version back earlier this year, maybe late last year, it will run a lot quicker than Phantom. So hopefully we'll get speed improvements because right now running it in Phantom is slow. And it basically spins up a virtual machine so there goes like a gig of your RAM and all kinds of crap. So hopefully this will be a step in the right direction. I don't know, I don't think there's any target date for this. How many people have had a, heard about React in Drupal? <laughs> so I tried to summarize what's known and what's conjecture. So Dries obviously mentioned it, made a lot of news. Um, the important thing to know, it's only targeted for the admin UI to improve UX. So hopefully, and our admin, U, our admin ex experience kind of sucks. So really, <laughs> if this spurs them and various developers to come up with new, better ways of doing like node edit and all the other admin screens that makes it slicker and easier for administrators to use, and I dare say makes it a little more WordPress-y. Yep. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Is that thing on? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it'll be a good thing. They're targeting for 8.7, which is scheduled for first quarter of 2018. Um, and of course, what really helped this was Facebook finally dropped their licensing, their old plus patents license that no one liked. Uh, Magento, part of one of its products uses React. Obviously Facebook uses React, Typo3 uses React, and a number of other ones. So it's pretty popular, not just for individual like project use, but being used with various other uh, CMSs and products. Okay. Notable issue numbers. This is in the slide, so you guys can. Um, here's the. Uh, there is a React proposal. There is a counter proposal to use Vue. The React people wrote a response to the Vue proposal. That's a pretty well uh, because there's a lot of crap comments in this thread, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And then uh, Vue's author wrote a response to the React people's comment, which is worth reading. And I thought he did a very fair job. And I, I'm not trying to push React or Vue. I just, if you want to try and keep up on what's going on, these are like some useful ones to read. And then someone came along and uh, proposed using Polymer web components, which if anything, I kind of like better because it's actually a web standard but it has its own issues. Uh, comments on the React proposal will be open until like three days from now. So if you have anything important to say or constructive, now is your time. Just one point. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you just want to cause trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's plenty of that in there already. Um, anyway. So if you don't want to waste your entire evening reading all this crap, you might want to just read five posts and then be done with it. Okay, here, here is some opinion and conjecture. What I seem to be hearing from the core devs, it's very likely going to be React. Uh, I thought Dries made a really interesting comment in his blog post, basically saying, we don't have enough JavaScript expertise in the Drupal community. I'm not sure how we should change that, uh, but I thought it was really interesting that he said it. Um, the React library will probably ship as part of the admin theme, not as a core JavaScript library. So while you could steal it from the admin theme, it won't actually be part of 
like the core libraries, it'd be part of the core theme libraries. Semantics, perhaps, but um, WordPress.com had notably stopped their React uh, effort because of the licensing. They haven't said officially, but what I hear is they're going to go back and continue with React. Uh, so it seems like React is winning the world. Um, and it's likely there's going to be a new React based DB log UI module by the end of the year. So it looks like this is going to happen fast if it does happen. Any questions on this? Okay. That's it. I got through that fast. <laughs> I didn't want to miss anything. Oh, thanks. Since we have uh, no time, is it 5.30? Is that it? Yeah. Oh, that was perfect. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Sorry? The JS Mint. And getting an ES6 version of that? Just to minify the job. Oh, um, I, 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 I think it should be fine. I don't know if it needs to be updated. I didn't see any mention of it. Um, it, it does look like initially they'll be trans transpiling anyway. Oh, they are? Yeah, I was, I was, looking, I was reading through the change order. Ah. But, but it's easy like, to get lost in the weeds. Like, uh, used to stuff, then it's not, it's not a meaningful problem. So that's probably why they have that, uh, that ES6 file name partial. Because yeah. they are transpiling. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's... See this so. You know, it makes sense, actually, since we still officially support IE11, and ES6 support in IE11 is trash. Ergo. Ergo. But, you know, transpiling is, like... You will be transpiling JavaScript until the end of JavaScript. So, get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Can you show the URL again? Oh, um... Oh, did, it, uh, did you get Twitter? Here, I'll just do this. Yeah. I didn't check, but I think somebody quit it. If that's a word. Yeah. You can ignore the... Uh, the slash thing at the end. How's that? Is that big enough? Yeah. <coughs> you overcorrected. Now it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot win. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, everyone. I was the guy that was giving nope. you parking advice, by the way. Oh, cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. So.